Okay. <laughs> well, here we are in the floral shop again. <laughs> again, and isn't it wonderful that I have so many sweet, considerate, thoughtful friends who will send me things like this. And like that. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? Yeah, Richard yeah. Lassiter, last year's and the year before and the year before stage manager, sent these just so I wouldn't forget him. <laughs> That's just divine. Well, Ruta, woman of the year. Great big coup for Casa Manana. Yeah. Yes. And you really were sweating this out till the very end? As you know, we sat waiting. I waited to hear from Bud two we weekends before coming down. Did we have it? Do we get it? What's going to happen? And we kept hearing, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden, I got home on Tuesday, and I said, well, from Palm Springs, I mean. And we don't have it, so I don't know what we're going to do. It's, it's either going to be they're playing our song, or another Molly Brown, or another Annie Get Your Gun, or another something. And hallelujah, and thank the Lord, we did get the rights. By default, mind you, but we got them. And I don't care how we got them. The Almighty was watching out for us. <laughs> Ruta, this show seems to me to be a marvelous vehicle for you. Do you feel that it is? I sure hope so. Um, she's not as gung-ho and quite as crazy and zany as most of the ladies that my audience is here in Fort Worth and Dallas, and in fact, all of Texas like to see me playing. She's just a touch more refined, but I still think that she's a good broad. I mean, she is a good dame, you know. She has to be in order to have succeeded the way she has and be beloved by as many people in the world as she is. Okay. Um, Jimmy, is that giving any problem um, if we can push that out of the way? Okay, I'm rolling. All right. Of all your numbers, which one do you think the audience is going to, you know, clap and yell and scream the most? Well, I suppose it'll be I'm one of the girls that's one of the boys. Um, I have kind of a favorite that is not a big rah-rah number, but I just think is kind of a sweet number, and that's the one where, that she sings when she's just a wee bit depressed called I Wrote the Book. Um, they're all kind of rather nice numbers. In fact, I'm surprised, Bobby, that none of them really made it to the big charts, uh, because there's a ballad in this thing that our leading man, Jason Bice, sings that is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So I'm just wondering, how come Frank Sinatra or somebody wonderful didn't record it and make it a big hit? But, uh, well, who knows? Maybe it'll come out of this show. Which one is that? It's a song called um, a, a Never Does a Day Go By That I Don't Think of Her. And it's a beautiful ballad, and I like it. And so I figure, well, one of these days I'll learn to sing it, even though it's not my song in the show. Ruta, do you find some personal identification with this character? Oh, yes. Very much so, because, listen, Bobby, I used to do two and a half hours live every day on television in Los Angeles with Regis Philbin. And it was hard news. It was a reportage of your own. Um, it was critiques on different things that you had been to, whether it was a restaurant or a show. Um, it was interviews with interesting people. I met wonderful political leaders. I met crazy religious kookaboos. I met wonderful religious leaders. I met all kinds of authors, dancers. So it was very exciting. And so I can identify very strongly with this lady. She just got up earlier in the morning than I did. That's all. And what about her juggling marriage and a career? Uh, does that part, do you identify with that part of it? I don't because I'm fortunately married to a man who has no problem with my career. Webb Lowe is very insecure. Insecure? Very secure is what I meant to say about who he is and what he is. And 
he almost smiles like your grandmother and says, oh, that's wonderful, and I'm so pleased. And the more people there are standing in line at the dressing room door to say hello to you, the happier he is, and he doesn't mind waiting until 2 in the morning. That's all right, darling. Do your thing. And if somebody calls him Mr. Lee, that's okay. He just smiles and says, that's fine. So I don't have any problems with juggling career and marriage because he's very supportive. Did you always know he'd be the talking? Right, no one will notice. Talk. Okay. Okay. Um, Go ahead. All right, I'll start that again then. Did you always know that Webb would be like that? I think from the day that I said, how do you do to him on the plane, I knew in my heart that this was the man that I was going to wind up with, which is very interesting because I never really believed in seeing someone across a crowded room, as we say in South Pacific, and falling in love. Hell, I saw him across a crowded airport, and I think I fell in love. And you know my words to him when he sat down next to me in the plane where he said, Are, is this seat taken? And I said, no, for the last time in my life. And he said, my name is Webb. Blow, and I said, and I'm Ruta Lee, and I think we should be married because then my name will be Ruta Lee Lo, and we can have a Chinese laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Silly, isn't it? <laughs> so it started out with a laugh, and it's been nothing but that ever since. <laughs> What about your friend Debbie getting married? Ah, isn't that wonderful? Of course, I knew it was happening, and I had to keep my mouth shut, and I didn't, it was just killing me not to call you, Bobby, and say, guess what, guess what? <laughs> but she did want it very, very quiet and very private. It is, after all, her third marriage. She has not been lucky in love and in marriage. She almost feels jinxed in a way, so she wanted this very quiet, very understated, and let me tell you what she fell in love with with uh, this man, Mr. Richard Hamlet, she said he is the duplicate of Webb Lowe. And her mama got back from the wedding and called me to say, okay, this is what she wore, this is what she wants you to know, and so on and so forth. And she said, just be, be prepared to meet the duplicate for Webb Lowe. So I can't wait to see this silver-haired devil. <laughs> I've met him on the phone, but I haven't met him in person. Well, please, when you see Debbie, give her oh, yes. my congratulations I will. and best wishes. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if she didn't stop in during the run of Woman of the Year here because, as you know, she played it on Broadway. Uh, she said it almost did her in. It's, it was very difficult for her to get up for it that fast because she had commitments. And um, so she was very, very helpful and gave me all kinds of advice and some costumes to use and things. And, well, you know, she's a very generous girl and I I love her very much. I know you're, you couldn't be closer if you were sisters. That's true. Yeah. Ruta, it is opening night, so we're around there. Continue on with the paint job. <sighs> put the paint, <laughs> put everything together. And we'll do our thing and get out of your hair. And good show and good run. Thank you, Bobby, and thank you for sharing your beloved audience with me. Bye. Okay, I'm rolling. Okay. Ruta, do you have any sort of personal identification with this role? Excuse me, go again? Uh, I'll repeat that question okay. again real quickly. Right. Ruta, do you have any personal identification with this role? What about the, what about juggling a career and marriage? Did you always know Webb would be like that? How about your friend Debbie Reynolds getting married? Of all the songs in this play, of all the songs in this musical, which one do you think will be a hit with the audiences? Okay, now I'll just give you reactions. Okay, I'm still rolling. Okay. Uh -huh. I feel like I should reach under and tickle you one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I will. Okay, I think that'll get it. Oh.